Boy, it's hot out. I don't know about you guys, but uh, around here it's been really hot and humid. You know, thank goodness we got this little window shaker sitting in here blowing some cool air. I actually, we were laughing about it, but with this home being so super insulated, it does do a little bit to take the edge off from outside. But there's no way we can use a product like this in a new home, you know, to condition, to deimnify, to do all that. So today, I actually invited Ken Eggleston of Meztech, their space pack division, to come down and kind of talk about HVAC systems, especially air conditioning. You know, what would be a good suggestion for a home like ours? So let's meet up with Ken. Hey, Ken. Hey, Dave. How are you doing? All righty. Real well. Real well. Nice to see you. Hey, I appreciate you coming down, you know, taking the, uh, you know, time out of your day to oh, come no down problem. and look at the project and talk about stuff. So this is kind of the idea what we have going on here. You know, we've got this new construction. It's super insulated. You know, the idea is that that, you know, requirement for heating and cooling is very minimal and uh, we want to take uh, advantageous of that and keep the uh, profile and the looks of that uh, big HVAC system to a minimum. I don't like big registers and grills in the rooms and things like that, but yet want to have a system that's uh, very effective. So uh, what does your job entail over there at SpacePack? Well, at SpacePack, I, I do a lot with uh, air conditioning and heating. Done, uh, my most specialized would be in high velocity. Mm -hmm. So with high velocity, it's a two inch ductwork that supplies the BTUs and the CFM to mix in the room. This is all done with a nine inch round plenum and two inch ductwork coming off of there. It's wonderful for a house wide open like this. I'm normally uh, stuck in houses that are already done, insulated, sheetrock, and they're trying to find a way to snake these two inch ductworks down the wall. Right. So with an open frame like this, it makes things a lot simpler. So what, what are some of the advantage of the high velocity uh, besides the size of ductwork? I mean, does well, it also it works off a principle called aspiration. So the air comes out of the two inch ductwork and it mixes the air in the room. Very mm -hmm. similar to radiant floor heating. Mm -hmm. What it does is it keeps the temperature throughout the whole entire house within two degrees. So oh. very even. Mm -hmm. Very even. Well, how does it handle like dehumidification? Dehumidification for the, the AC side of it, it pulls out 30% more moisture than a conventional ducted system. So that being said, let's say you set your thermostat to 75, it may feel like 72. So okay. as they say, cold, dry air feels better than cold, wet air. Yeah, well that's what I've noticed. A lot of people oversize this. When you walk in, you get a cold, damp box where the thing must have satisfied and didn't Absolutely, and when they're short cycling like that, we're not pulling the humidity out. So yeah. you lose that comfort level. Right, right, right. To me, with this wall construction technique, really anything under the roof rafter is conditioned space. So I kind of thought we'd put the equipment up in the attic, but really that's in conditioned space. Absolutely. So up here is kind of where we're planning on, and well, we actually get some, some ductwork run and units placed up in there. Where would you put a return in a room like this? I mean, do you want it low? Do you want it high? Yeah. Um, actually, with, with space pack, high velocity, the re return location is not that important. You do like to get it in the space, but it could be high, it could be low. Because of the way we're mixing the air in the room, re return location is not as important. Right, right. Yeah, to, to me, it's more of a cooling system because we are going to have radiant all on the first floor. The whole mm -hmm. system is going to be uh, building really heated by radiant floors, so when I think of uh, indoor comfort and conditioning, I'm thinking of mainly cooling and dehumidification on the first floor. Second floor, really haven't made that decision whether I'm gonna do radiant on there. Uh, you know, this is houses for us and our kids have grown, so I don't know, I'm still vacillating whether to spend the money and go through all that radiant and, and I'm not, nobody's really up there to enjoy it most of the right, time. Right, right. That maybe a quicker recovery system, maybe uh, something like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And space back and do heating as well. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we do, uh, we were a heating product before we were an air conditioning product. Oh, awesome. Yeah, now Ken, now my question is, we talked about the return, but what would you do for a supply in a return in a room like this, you know, with the high ceiling and Really, I don't want to have any interruptions in my insulation on this wall, so right. I'd rather not put them on the roof on this side. What would you do? Well, with this, this um, system, because it is that high velocity, we're mixing the air in the room, by putting them right, right on this part of the ceiling would work great. It would be able to shoot the air out and mm -hmm. mix the air and kind of kind of wash that window. You know, with your typical conventional system, you always want to get your outlets close to the windows so you're pulling right. the air across. Right. But again, I keep bringing it up with that aspiration, mixing the air in the room, 
it does give you more options of location of your supplies. Yeah, well, that's why I picked the product here. You know, I've installed it before in the past. I really like how it works. And as long as you follow the design criteria, everything's silent. It right, really is. Right. So Yeah, just up here, I wanted to show you some of the uh, rough-in process that gets started for the uh, high-velocity air conditioning, you know. So kind of the idea is, you know, I was trying to keep that uh, stuff to fit in the walls. And mm -hmm. as I said earlier, I like to you know, keep all the equipment up above and outlets in the ceiling. So here I have some runs going down, dropping down into the lower level there. And uh, it fits right in a two by four wall. Yeah, it's amazing. ideal, ideal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just, we have to tie it in there and uh, do that part of the plenum. But uh, I really like that aspect, you know, I have a, a drill and we just drill that one hole and boom, take it down and, and rough it in. Right. And this whole back, ceiling over here is going to be PV. We're going to have 13 kW of PV, so you, you hate to put a fossil fuel piece of equipment in there or something else So for heating. So uh, I'm still wrestling with that air source heat pump or ground source heat pump. You know, they both yeah. have their advantages. What, what would you do if it was your home? Um, I, you know, it's very expensive to drill those wells and go with uh, the ground source, and uh, we would happen to have a product called uh, the Solstice Extreme, which is a low ambient uh, heat pump, which mm -hmm. will do heating and cooling. Oh, okay. So hydronically. So right. you'd be able to tie that into the air handlers, tie it into your radiant floor, and it would probably cover your load 95% of the time. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. That's a, what do they do for a backup? What would you do for that? Uh, you could do a, a backup boiler if needed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That, that's the only concern. It's really in the wintertime for heating, you know, is, is a right. supplemental of that. You know? Right. Yeah, I can I do have a question for you right over in here. You know, I've done a lot of these systems, but I just kind of you know, get caught and forget some of that dimension. Like, like on this particular run, I've got an elbow and another elbow. What was that distance you like to keep between elbows so you don't have the turbulent that I can do? So what we like uh, to do is we like to have about 18 inches of straight pipe. So after we hit the 90, we want to go 18 inches before we do a two inch takeoff. Oh, okay. And then with the two inch takeoffs, we want to make sure we have this radius. We don't want things to be tight. Mm -hmm. Because it is high velocity, if you start crimping stuff up, it is going to cause noise. So there is a few rules while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, also, we're going to touch on the length of runs. So we want to keep them balanced. We want a balanced system. We want them to be between 9 and 15 feet. Okay. Although mm -hmm. it is okay to go more than that. So mm -hmm. it, it's just called the 5% rule. You start losing 5% of your capacity for every 5 feet you add to this. Okay. So you may, if you have two 20-footers, you might have to add another run to the space to get the BTUs and the CFM into the area. Okay, right, 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 right. You can only do so much, you know. You want to balance all equal runs in a perfect right. world, but it's not right. a perfect world. Right. Yeah. And I've been on many jobs that they run these things 30, 40 feet. And then they ask me why it's not working. And then right. we're always saying you have to add more outlets. Yeah, yeah, you did. And it's, it's always better to do that math ahead of time because once this place is all sheetrocked and done, where are those outlets going to go? Yeah. They're going to go in an area that doesn't need the BTUs. Yeah, so, Ken, the, the orifices, when and where do we use this? I, I always had that question. These you are know? like Chinese stars. We just want to throw them into the wood. <laughs> yeah. But no, no, no. So basically, how, how I was saying, between 9 and 15 feet, mm -hmm. it's okay to run shorter runs as well. But then okay. you got to play the balancing game. Okay. So a lot of times when I'm training, I tell guys, just keep them 9 to 15 feet, and then you don't have to worry about putting these in. Right. But it, let's say we're doing a bathroom and you don't want all that airflow in there, you might put a 15 percenter or a 30 percenter or a 50 percenter in there to kill okay. that airflow. Okay. Well, Dave, everything's looking really good. You're following the rules, and I, I really enjoy the fact that you did uh, the multiple returns with that nice filtration system on the back of the unit. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hey, I do have a question, Ken, before you yes, take sir. off. If homeowners are looking for more information, where's the best place for them to go? Where, where well, if they go on spacepack.com, they can get information on the product, but they also, there's an area where you can fill some stuff out and you, you oh, send okay. a lead to our certified contractors. Oh, okay. And right. then also contractors that want to get involved with Spacepack are able to look at our training at the Reed Institute and come down to Westfield, Massachusetts and be certified and oh. they get an extended warranty oh, okay. by doing awesome. so. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Dave. Um, this, this house is amazing. I, I love that you're making it so efficient and tight. And uh, it seems like a great application for Spaceback. I do appreciate this. Yeah, 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 it's awesome, awesome. No, no, I really feel that the type of product and everything else lends itself well for this house. So absolutely, again, absolutely. appreciate Thank your you time. Thank you very much. Ken. That was awesome. All, All right. right, we'll see you later. Take care.